Welcome to Course 1, Unit 2, Lesson 2, What are the Components of a Bond? There are four lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is understanding what the par value is. The second is understanding what the coupon rate is. The third is understanding the term. And the fourth is understanding market value. So let's get started. Okay, in lesson one, we had a scenario where we had a CFO named Jack, and Jack was responsible for getting a $500 million loan from the bank in order to uh, build a new headquarters building for his company. And so the bank uh, created 500,000 bonds, and they issued all these bonds down to the investors. So some of that might not have been crystal clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the bonds from the investor standpoint. So as we look at these people over on the right-hand side of the screen, Let's take one person, one of these individuals, and look at one of their bonds more in depth. Okay, so here's one of the 500,000 bonds that the bank sold, and it went to this investor named Jesse. And so as we look at the bond that Jesse's holding, uh, we're going to start right at the top and work our way down. So at the top of the bond is simply the name of the uh, real estate company that issued the bond. So this is the person who's responsible for ensuring that Jesse receives his coupon payments and also whenever the bond matures, he's gonna receive his thousand dollars. So let's look at the par value or also known as the face value. This is simply the dollar amount that the bond was originally issued for, which is a thousand dollars. So in order for Jesse to buy this, he'd have to buy the bond for a thousand dollars. And then that's the, also the amount of money that Jesse's gonna receive whenever the bond becomes mature. And so let's, let's move down and look at the term, okay? And as we look at the term, we can see that the date that this bond is issued is 1 May 2012, and the date that the bond becomes mature is 30 years later on 1 May 2042. And so when Jesse buys that bond from the Real Estate Empire's company, um, he buys that bond on 1 May for $1,000. Then whenever the bond becomes mature on that 1 May 2042, uh, Real Estate Empires is going to have to pay Jesse his thousand dollars back that he initially purchased the bond for. So in between all of that time, in between those 30 years, uh, Jesse's collecting his interest on his thousand dollar investment. And so when you look down at the bottom here, I have two coupons. And back in the olden days, whenever you'd buy a bond, you'd actually get a whole booklet of these coupons. Okay. And as you can see, there's a dotted line. So what Jesse would do for his first coupon, if, if he would have bought this back in the olden days, not right now, uh, because everything's electronic now, but if he would have had his booklet, what he would have done is he would have cut out his first coupon and he would have mailed this to the real estate empire company and he would have received the $25 check back um, just as long as he would have mailed it in after 1 October 2012, which is six months after the uh, initial date of issue. And so each time that you see the date, so the next one you can see is 1 May 2013, Jesse would mail that in and he'd get another $25 check from the real estate company. And so he would continue to do this for 60 coupons because they're being paid two times a year. And so you can see if we add up the two coupons for the first year, that'd be $50. And $50 from the $1,000 par value is 5%. So that's how you get the coupon rate of 5% is just adding up the, the coupons that you receive for the entire year and that becomes your percent. So really it's, it's that simple. If Jesse would buy this bond the day it was issued and he'd hold it until maturity, he would get his $25 check every six months and at the end he'd get his thousand dollars back. And that's all there is to understanding on how a bond works. So, of course, it can't be simply that easy. Um, and this is where really understanding how bonds truly work, um, it gets a little bit more involved when you start talking about the resale of the bond. Um, let's assume Jesse didn't want to hold on to the bond for all 30 years. That's where things get tricky um, because the value of that bond is constantly changing as market conditions change. Um, and I briefly touched on this on lesson one, and I might have moved a little too fast. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go a little bit slower here so you understand how the market value of the bond changes uh, through time. So let's assume that Jesse bought this bond on day one of the issue, which was 1 May 2012. 
And now we're going to warp ourselves into time five years later. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to move interest rates um, from when Jesse initially purchased the bond. Uh, so when Jesse purchased the bond, interest rates were around 5%, and that's what he bought his bond for. But now, five years later, interest rates are now up at 6%, which is a lot better if he would be buying new bonds because he'd be getting 6% opposed to 5%. And so what happens is on his bond, his bond value has gone down significantly to $871. Okay. Now, let's look at the 15-year. Let's assume Jesse wanted to, he bought his bond, he held it for 15 years, and he wanted to sell it 15 years later. Um, and we look down there and we see the coupon rate that he bought it for was 5%. That's not going to change. Um, but we look at the interest rates and it's still at 6%. But you look at his bond value and it's higher than it was at the five-year mark. So that's kind of weird. So let's go ahead and look at if he was going to sell this bond at 29 years, meaning there's only one year left on the bond before it becomes mature. And let's look at what would happen if those interest rates stayed exactly the same. So his coupon is never going to change. That's the 5%. And interest rates are at 6%. Okay, we're going to assume the interest rates didn't change. They're still at 6%. But look at his bond value. It's $990 now. So as we look at these three different scenarios, why is his value on his bond changing when the coupon didn't change and the interest didn't change and only the term changed from you know, one year being left on the bond to 15 years being left on the bond and 25 years being left on the bond. And what you're going to find is if you're going to buy that bond at the 29 year mark and there was only one year left, you're going to receive two coupons. You're going to receive two $25 checks and then you're going to get that a thousand dollars back. So why would I be willing to pay um, a lot less for this bond knowing that I'm going to make my thousand dollars back at the end of the year. So the value, what you're going to find is that the longer that you hold the bond, the closer that it approaches the 30 year mark or whatever the term is on the bond, that the bond is going to approach the value, its par value or its face value. But the longer that the bond has before it becomes mature and those interest rates change, that bond value, that market value on the bond is drastically going to change. Okay, and that's really important to understand if you're buying long-term bonds. And as, as we talk about strategy, when we get into how the markets move and things like that, you're going to find that if you're buying high-yielding bonds, you're definitely going to want to buy a long-term bond, just as long as you're buying a good company and, and a stable company. The long-term bonds are good if you're buying uh, bonds at a really high interest rate, because when the interest rates drop, you get the exact opposite effect, which I'm going to demonstrate now. Okay, so let's assume that interest rates dropped 1% opposed to raised 1%. Now, I want to highlight a term here that you might uh, hear when you start getting involved in bonds more, and you're going to hear the term basis points. So we're talking about a, a coupon of 5% here, and interest rates go down to 4%. That's called 100 basis points. 1% change is 100 basis points. So if it dropped 2%, that'd be 200 basis points. So that's just some terminology to kind of take with you. So if you hear that, you understand what, what people are talking about. So in the last scenario, we had the interest rates raised. But now what we're going to do is we're going to look at Jesse holding the bond for five years, and then he's looking to sell it. So his bond, the coupon rate when he bought it was 5%, but interest rates are lower right now at 4%, and his bond value is $1,157. Okay, let's look at the 15-year one. Same same coupon, interest rates are down 1%, but his bond value is now only $1,112, which is lower. And then as you look at the 29-year one, it's really close to the bond's maturity, so the bond value is going to be really close to the par value, which is almost $1,000, $1,010. So what's really uh, unique about bonds is that if you buy a long-term bond and you get it at a really high interest rate, and you generally expect the interest rates to continue to drop, you could potentially turn around and sell the bond only a couple years later for an enormous premium because if a person buys that 5% bond and interest rates are at 4%, in order for them to compensate all that money that they would lose over the long haul, they have to pay that much of a premium in order to uh, make the same amount of money. So that's some uh, important stuff to uh 
to really comprehend. And if you didn't get it, I would recommend to rewind the tape, listen to this a couple times until you fully understand this concept because this is vital to understanding how Warren Buffett invests. So here's the thick of it. If you can remember this, you're gonna be good to go. When interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And when interest rates go down, the bond prices are gonna go up. It's really that simple. And that's what you really gotta understand and take away from this lesson. So in this lesson, we covered the uh, terminology for par value. We talked about what the coupon rate was. We talked about the term, and then we talked about how market value changes with interest rates. And so I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.